Okay, hello, this is Dr. Haynes, and today I'm going to talk about nurse lamps. Oh, uh, it was a lamp that was invented by, uh, what's his name? You know, that guy, Nurst. Walt Walter Nurst in 18... What is it? 1897. So, um, I guess his lamp used a, uh, well, let's take a look here. Okay. So it didn't actually require to be in a vacuum. It used a filament of uh, yttrium oxide and zirconium oxide and, uh, well, I just have a zirconium oxide rod here. And when you heat it up, it becomes conductive. Well, at least his rod did. I don't know if this one's going to or not. And uh, so it has special heaters to get it up to temperature. And then um, you could run current through it and it would light up without oxidizing in ambient air. Okay. And uh, so let's, I just wanted to do some testing. I have um, a uh, voltmeter here. I'm going to measure the current going through this. And I have some kind of um, Bunsen burner thing. Or not Bunsen burner, a propane torch. And I'll try to heat this up. And uh, let's put that guy down. I got a couple of these. And so I made a... Uh, <coughs> dangerous looking device here look at that okay so it's an extension cord with a couple alligator clips on the other side and uh, I'm going to try to plug this in the wall if I really wanted to do this safely I'd probably put a ballast resistor in here because this process could run away if it actually works I'm just going to see if I get a current increase in this by heating it up but if it actually did work you know the resistance would go to zero and it would just keep on drawing more and more current the more current it draws the hotter it's going to get it would be a runaway process so you'd probably want to stick a resistor in series with this to uh, stop that from running away but let me um let me get this kind of set up and I'm going to hook this in to the amp you got to be careful when you're measuring amps too because you'll blow a fuse I'm going to hook it into my amp meter in series with this to see what kind of current I'm drawing through this. Do not, of course, put that in parallel with wall current. You'll probably be smoking your meter. So let me uh, try to set some things up and we will see, see what we can do here. See if we can decrease the resistance of this guy when we get him hot. Which would be a first step toward uh, making our own nurse lamp. A lamp that doesn't require a vacuum or a uh, inert gas around it to stop it from oxidizing since it's already oxidized. Should be very interesting. Okay. Okay, looks like it has finally arrived. Oh gosh, it's really taped up good. Let's see what the heck this thing is. Yeah, of course I don't have my razor blades here. So everything's in chaos, the whole world's in chaos. Gosh. Hopefully I can invent some kind of death ray that will bring things back into normality again. Oh gosh, what the heck is this thing? Well, that's interesting. Well, I don't know what the heck this is. Oh, look at that. Oh gosh, this is so cool. Is this what I think it is? Please be. Oh, look at that. Oh, yes. These are zirconium rods. They're really thin. Look at that. I was going to try to make a nursed lamp out of these. Oh, this is so cool. Is there only two in there? I thought there was more. I thought I ordered like 10 or something. I didn't realize it only came as a pack of two. They're like really heavy too. Look at that. There's two of them there. See? Oh gosh. I got these off of eBay, I believe. Let me stick them back in here. And we'll really do some experiments with this. This is going to be cool. I'm going to get them 
flying straight so they don't break, hopefully. And wrap them back up. Oh, look at that. This is awesome. Okay. Got some fun experiments planned for that. Okay, so remember, whenever you're setting up a circuit, you always want to triple check it before you put the power onto it. Because, uh... Oh, is this even... Oh. Let me just check this. Okay, yeah, that's, that's powered up. I want to make sure there's power on my power strip. Okay, so I'm running the high voltage through our nursed or our zirconium oxide rod and I'm going to run that into the amp meter. I have it set on milliamps and I'm going to have to watch this closely. I have it on the 4 milliamp scale <clears throat> just to make sure that it doesn't draw too much current. I just want to see if I can uh, change the resistance at all by heating it up because the resistance is probably pretty high. And let's go ahead and we'll plug this guy in here. Yeah, this is okay. Okay, in case you people don't know, this is super dangerous. Okay, so there we go. Look at that, we're getting some current through it already. Isn't that amazing? Okay, so I think the uh, igniter on my torch is not working, so I gotta look for something to ignite it with. Oh, I thought I had some. Everything's in chaos with all this. Freaking bureaucratic criminals and their phony you-know-what that they've created. Phony catastrophe. Oh, here we go. Does this thing work? There we go. Probably should get a new, new torch here. Okay, so we're at 0.1 milliamps, 0.01 milliamps, and we'll see if we can heat up this zirconium oxide rod. Look at that. Get more current out of this thing. Looks like it's glowing when I heat it up. Uh, I may not be able to heat the whole thing up, though. Be a problem. Maybe I'm going to have to reduce the length of this. I might just clip the clip lead on much closer because uh, I don't think I can heat the whole rod up. Okay, let me turn this thing off. Oh, shit. Okay. <coughs> Now remember this is hot and when I say hot I mean it's got high voltage from the wall on it and uh, it's probably hot too because I've been heating up with the uh, oh. uh, torch as well. There we go. Uh, make it a little bit shorter there. I'm still reading 0.1 milliamps on that guy. Oh. Anyway. Here we go. Oops. There we go. And remember, blue means it is really hot. The flame is super, super hot. There we go. Seem to be getting an increase in current here. Might be cooking my leads though. Well, that's a disappointment. Oh, uh, at 
Kitchen's our kitchen on fire now. Oh wait, no look, I think the current went up a little bit. Oh, very cool. Do you see that? It went up to two. So, oh yeah, see, that's up to two. Oh, very cool. Maybe I'll move this clip wheel a little bit closer. Let's see. Let's see if I can heat up a shorter area. Enough to. Three, four, five, holy cow, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, look at that. The milliamps are going up. Ooh, but I uh, <laughs> am catching my clip leads on fire. Okay, so I may have to rethink this out, get some better connections, because it looks like I have kind of melted my, uh, my clip leads here. But I was definitely getting an increase in current here, which uh, is very promising. Looks like we might be able to uh, make a nurse lamp out of our zirconium oxide rod. Because in principle, it looks like the uh, resistance was going down and our current was going up. Increased like by a factor of 10. Although I don't think that's real current on there right now because I did, you know, take the clip lead off, I think. The uh, voltmeter might be picking up something capacitively because, uh, <clears throat> let me just turn this thing off up here, turn off the power strip, see if, uh, oh, see, that that's just an offset, because it has no power going to it, so, oh man, it's starting to stink in here. So anyway, very interesting, let me turn this guy back on, so I can have some light here. So, might be doing some interesting projects with uh, nursed lamp type technology. We'll have to see. Look like it might be possible, but I'm going to have to get rid of all the plastic around this guy because it was definitely scorching it and that was not good. Anyway. Okay, so I'm just disconnecting the leads now. And uh, here I ran into another problem. Looks like the ceramic got hot enough to actually melt itself right into the metal here. What's going on here? I'm going to try to finagle that off without breaking it, hopefully. It looks like it has uh, fused itself to the metal. Got hot enough. So, very... That's annoying. Maybe I used, need to use, uh, like, refractory metals to uh, clamp onto this thing. It looks like it... Kind of discolored the zirconium up the top as well. Okay, yeah, see, it's, it's not coming off, and I, it's on there solid enough that I'm afraid I'm going to break it. Maybe I can get a screwdriver in between there and try to pry it out. Okay, anyway, that's annoying. Okay, so let's take a look here. So it looks like... I got it off that lead, and it looks like... Oh, let's just put it under here, I guess. Oh, gosh. Where is it? I mean, that's copper melted to it. It actually got hot enough to where it was clamped on there to melt the copper. So it was definitely drawing current through there. Because I don't think that torch was hot enough to melt the copper. It wasn't even pointed at that spot. So it was drawing current enough through the copper clip lead over here to uh, melt, to fuse it onto our ceramic zinc oxide rod. So it was definitely starting to draw current. Anyway, very cool, huh? Anyway, so... um. 
I think we'll end this project right here as, as a part one, and I'm going to have to do some redesigns and plan on making a part two. Let's see how much current we can get out of this thing when we heat it up. Maybe we can get it to ignite, get enough current so that it keeps itself hot. That'd be very interesting, huh? Anyway, very, very cool. Here's our zirconium rod and our, of course, our torch. And, uh, looks like, let's just take a close look at the zirconium rod. Make sure, uh, looks like it's in pretty good shape still. Now let's get down there. Can we do that? Okay. Anyway, so it doesn't look like it's scorched too badly. And it shouldn't be. So anyway, this is uh, Dr. Jane's, and thanks for watching.